Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And of course, we're set for our second major conversation. January, as we said uh, before the break, is the Vical Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, it is said to be a perfect opportunity for the World Health Organization and its partners uh, to raise awareness about cervical cancer and HPV vaccination. Don't worry, we'll get to know that, all that means. Well, we're told that 19, uh, 19 of the top 20 countries with the highest cervical cancer burden were in sub-Saharan Africa in the year 2018. Um, cervical cancer presents a significant public health threat to women on the African continent, all but one of the top 20 countries worldwide with the highest burden of cervical cancer in 2018, like we said, were in Africa. What do we need to know about this ailment so that we live a long and healthy lives? We have joining us to discuss this, Dr. Blosom uh, Madua Fokwa. She's a public health physician joining us via Zoom in Lagos. Um, Dr. Madua Fokwa, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Kofi. Um, thank you so much for having me. All right. All right. Uh, what is cervical cancer? Let's start from the basics. Yes. So, so cervical cancer is a disease that affects the neck of a woman's womb. So the neck of a woman's womb is like right below the womb. The womb is where the baby stays. So a cancer is a disease that not only affects the cell of the organ where it starts, but it, it can actually spread to other parts of the body and eventually it will lead to death. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, what are risk factors for cervical cancer? So cervical cancer is a very interesting cancer. It's one of the cancers that we actually know the cause of this cancer. In 99% of the cases, cervical cancer is caused by a virus called human papilloma virus. So it's interesting in other cancers like breast cancer, colon cancer, we, we know, okay, if, uh, let's say if you don't exercise or if your diet is um, high in fat, you're at risk. But in this particular cancer, we actually do know the cause, and the cause in most of the cases is human papilloma virus. And it is sexually transmitted infection, and it, most people that are sexually active have actually come in contact with human papilloma virus. So it's actually quite common. Hmm. This is uh, worrying. Yes. Worrying. Are you saying yes. the <laughs> cervical cancer is a sexually transmitted um, a disease? Absolutely, yes. Wow. Wow. And this is what a lot of people don't realize, yes. <laughs> wow. Um, that's, that's, that's surprising, really. Um, yes. So, 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 I mean, what, the risk factors here you're talking about, uh, uh, is it unprotected sex, maybe? Or having sex with an infected yes, person? Absolutely. Yes, so, so having sex with someone that is infected. But the, the, the difference between human papilloma, human papilloma virus and other sexually transmitted diseases like gonorrhea, syphilis, even HIV, is it's ubiquitous. That is to say it's everywhere. So if you've had unprotected sex, even once in your life, most likely you have come in contact with the human papilloma virus. Wow. 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 Yes. Um, um, so, I mean, this human papilloma virus you're talking about, um, <laughs> I hope I've mentioned it right. <laughs> Um, yes, you are. <laughs> how, how, how does one, you know, maybe for instance, a carrier uh, contract it? Is, it? is it hereditary? Because I mean, for someone to share it, they must have gotten it. Or is it basically just spread from person to person? Is it a hereditary factor, uh, a gene factor here? Or DNA factor here? So, so it's not hereditary. It's, it's spread from person to person. So, you know, it sounds bleak as you're hearing it, but the... I don't want to say the good thing about human papilloma virus, but the thing about human papilloma virus is in 95% of cases, the infection will re resolve on its own. So it will resolve and the individual wouldn't even know that they had the infection. So in 95% of cases, it resolves without doing any harm to the individual. But in 5% of the cases, it can now progress to cancer, it can not just pro pro progress to cancer of the cervix, it can progress to cancer of the oral cavity, the throat, the anus, any part of your body that engages in sexual activity 
it can actually progress the cancer in those areas. But usually in about 5% of the cases. Hmm. <laughs> um, yes. what, 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 <laughs> why, I know the kids are watching this morning, so I'm going to have to change the way I'm asking this question. Um, these questions, but um, <laughs> why the throat? Okay, so people that engage in oral sex, for example, so it can be transmitted from the perineal cavity, from the pubic area, from the vagina, to the throat. So people that engage in anal sex, it can also be transmitted to that area as well. All right, we, I think we will we, we'll, we'll substitute the S word for, for intercourse, maybe. Just that. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, 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 so those, those words do uh, anything. So. This, yeah, this is a, a heated topic. Yeah, it's uh, more heated than I thought it yeah. would be. Um, uh, so, so, but, but for the per person who has it, um, I don't know, maybe the first person who ever had it, uh, for people who do not engage in unprotected intercourse um, with persons uh, who are carrying this human papillomavirus, is there another way to transmit it? Because I'm thinking, or is, is it not known to the pup to maybe science so far? I mean, if there are other ways of getting it, because, I mean, apart from unprotected intercourse, let's say. Yeah, so, so like I said, it's a tra sexually transmitted infection. So that's okay. really how it's transmitted. Okay. But, but that's actually not the big news. The big news here is 95% of the cases it will resolve. In 5% of cases it will progress. But the bigger and the more interesting news is it takes so long to progress from human papillomavirus infection to cervical cancer, for example. It can take up to 20 years. So that 20 years presents you with the opportunity to pick it up with screening tests and ha actually have it treated and you'll be completely fine. So we have so many screening tests that we do we actually do have a vaccine for the human papilloma virus. So there are so many layers of protection that, are, that have been made available. And like you said at the beginning, most of the deaths from cervical cancer occur in low and middle income countries like Nigeria. And that's because of lack of healthcare access. So people lack access to the vaccine, people lack access to the screening tests like the pap smear, people lack access to all these um, protective services that can actually prevent you from either getting, uh, developing uh, cervical cancer or dying from cervical cancer. So people actually don't realize in parts of the West, like in the US, the UK, Europe, people really don't die of cervical cancer anymore because at some point, your healthcare provider is going to pick it up and going to treat it and then you'll be fine. Hmm. Interesting. Um, yes. Okay, so so this is very good information, and you're putting out here. Yeah. Um, since we're seeing it affects the, the women, um, how about men? Because the, the statistics that we put out earlier talking about, you know, is is it or something that uh, the men are in danger of? Because uh, the intercourse most times we have um, um, legally and officially is between the male and female. Yes, that's a fantastic question. I'm glad you asked that question. So back to what I had said initially. So, you know, we, we, we've started vaccinating children between the ages of 9 and 14 with the human papillomavirus vaccine. We are vaccinating boys and girls, and this is why we're doing that. Because usually the, if the, the man can transmit the virus to the woman, but if he is already vaccinated, then he's not going to get the infection. That's one. But for the men, if they engage in oral intercourse, for example, they can actually get the human papilloma virus in the oral cavity on the throat, and it can actually cause cancer in those areas. For people that engage in anal intercourse as well, they can actually have anal cancer from human papilloma virus. So that's how men are affected. Men don't have cervixes, obviously, but they can have oral cancer, throat cancer, and anal cancer as well from human papilloma virus. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, uh, 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 we'll come to the prevention very quickly. Um, uh, we're almost out of time. So from what you've said, um, taking the vaccine, and I'm assuming it's the HPV vaccine, it's, uh, it's one of the ways of preventing this. Is a vaccine yes. for children alone? Can adults take it as well? Great question again. So... The recommendation is children take it between the ages of 9 and 14. They take two doses. 
From the ages of 15 and 26, they take three doses. After the age of 26, you have to have a discussion with your healthcare provider to understand your exposure, your possible exposure, and then your healthcare provider can advise as to whether you will benefit from the vaccine depending on the level of um, exposure you've had, will advise whether you benefit from the HPV vaccine or whether you should just go ahead and do other screening tests like HPV virus tests. There's a test for the HPV virus which you can readily get or you can get what we call the pap smear or you can get what we call the BIA. So these are things that you can do if you can't, if your healthcare provider decides that you may not benefit from the vaccine because you've already been uh, widely exposed to the virus. Okay. Um, you said it takes about 20 years for it to progress uh, to a uh, full Correct. stage, yes. And for those who, have, who, who get tested and uh, they are found to have this uh, uh, cervical, or this virus, rather, before it gets to the cancer stage, can they uh, be treated? Can they take a pill for it? Is there medication? Is there a so, cure? So, so, yes, yeah, so absolutely. So, so what happens is you, you're, you're, you get the HPV um, test, so if you test, so what we usually do, we give you the test along with a pap smear for the females. If you test negative for the HPV virus and you test negative on the pap smear, you don't get tested again for five years. But if you do get, if we get you tested and you're positive, we're going to have to see you in one year. So okay. depending on the level of advancement that we see, for example, in your past smear, we might want to see you in six months. And for some people, you might, we might, you might actually need to get treated immediately. So treatments are readily available. We have cryotherapy, we have um, resection. There are so many things that can be done, but you can actually get treated and it will not uh, progress to advanced cancer. Mm. Um, how can people and where, where can people get tested? And, uh, What's the recommendation, um, you know, for males and females, you know, f to get tested? Is it every year? You know, what kind of test do they need to do? So the test is called the human papillomavirus test. So it's available at um, lab, lab um, facilities around Lagos. Some tertiary facilities also operate. So you, if you speak to your healthcare provider, they'll be able to refer you to a lab facility that offers that test. So you just get the test, get yourself tested. And for the females, you get your pap smear done. And once the results are reviewed and it's negative, you're basically fine for the next five years. And then after five years, you get tested. So now the, the HPV test is a little bit expensive, so not everyone can afford it. For people that cannot afford it, you can get the pap smear. If your pap smear is negative, then we don't see you for the next three years. So you do it every three years if it's negative, up to the time that you're 60 years old. After 60 years old, you're going to do it every year for three years, and then after that, you don't do it at all. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Will you advise, you know, sexually active, there we go again, uh, uh, adults to, um, <laughs> um, to stay off oral, um, oral intercourse and uh, anal intercourse um, just so they can stay safe and stay alive? I mean, I'm, I'm not judging anyone here, but just for their safety. <laughs> Oh, no, and that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to tell people what to do in their private um, private spaces. I'm just here to present what options are available to protect yourself and to prevent this dreadful, like highly preventable disease. So I'm not going to tell you what to do in your own private time. <laughs> because, I mean, if we hear that uh, um, the advice is that the husband should... Um, should refrain from from the oral. Maybe it might cause some issues in some marriages, you know. So, uh, I like the I like the way you put it. All right. Um. Um. Is there anywhere you know people can get more information from? You know, is there anywhere people get more information from? So yes, yeah, people can get more information. Um, um. I'm with the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria, Lagos Branch. Okay. So you can follow us on our Instagram, uh, APHPN Lagos. 
we have periodic um, information sessions that we put out there. So you can get a lot of information. You can also get really good information from the World Health Organization uh, website. So these are really good sources where you can get accurate information. All yes. Right. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Anything you want to add before we go? All I want to add is for your viewers, anyone listening to us right now, this might be the wake-up call that you need. Go to your healthcare provider. Remember, a pap smear is very cheap. It's not expensive. You can get it done, and it can actually save your life. And if you have children between the ages of 40, please do get them vaccinated against HPV vaccine, um, against HPV virus with the HPV vaccine. Please take care of yourself, take care of your lo loved ones, spread the information. You could actually save someone's life. All right. Yes. Uh, Dr. Blossom Madua Fokwa is the public health physician and also uh, the public relations officer uh, for the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria, Lagos. Blossom, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for having me, Sophie. It was great, happy. It was great being here. Fantastic having you and look forward to having you again. And, uh, okay. Thank you very much. And that's the size of our package. Very important, as she says, go get tested. The human papilloma, papilloma virus test. And uh, for our ladies, the pap smear uh, is very important. And um, you can decide if you want to stay away from the other things <laughs> as she talked about. Okay, uh, don't look at me like that. My name is Kofi Bartels. Uh, please follow us on social media at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on YouTube, where we have two accounts. Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We'll be back tomorrow with more right here uh, on The Breakfast. Have a wonderful day. Up next is the news brief at 9.